You're listening to the Mangroves to Mountains podcast, where we talk all things outdoors, hunting, fishing, paddling, camping, adventure travel, and more. Thanks for listening. Okay, so flies. Um, I like to use streamers. Um, if they're really aggressive or they're, you know, just seeing fish everywhere, then I'll usually put on something topwater, like a popper or a slider or a deer hair diver, something that's up near the surface. I often film my fishing outings um so if they're really aggressive i want to get something on on video um of course i'm going to want a, a top water strike so um, when they're really fired up i'll usually take off whatever fly i'm using if i'm seeing a bunch of fish around and they're busting bait i'll put on a popper usually chartreuse or white um or, or a slider like a deer hair fly something that's just under the surface that i can see them come up and eat and the camera can catch that too so um, but if i'm just fishing and i'm not seeing a lot, a lot of fish around I'll typically use a chartreuse and white uh, clouser minnow. Um, one thing about the fly patterns that I tie, even the, the clousers, I'll, if it's a chartreuse and white clouser, I'll take a black sharpie and put three bars on it just to like imitate a baby peacock bass. They, they will eat their young. So, and, and bass like to eat peacock bass, I mean largemouth bass. So um, just a good all, all around searching pattern. It's basically like a perch coloration a freshwater perch so same kind of deal just you know chartreuse maybe a little bit of orange and white um if they're being finicky then sometimes i'll put a more natural color like a gray back with a white belly clouser a bead chain or lead eye clouser um and then sometimes if if that doesn't work then i'll put on an olive just a straight olive um, clouser or just any kind of olive streamer um, olive is kind of a great all-around pattern if the fish are a little tricky, and this this goes for all species. Oh gosh, Trout too. If I'm if I'm having difficulty catching fish, uh, I like to fish streamers for trout, freshwater trout. So um, I'll use dry flies too if they're if they're obviously if there's a hatch. But if I'm just searching for fish, I'll use an olive woolly bugger. It's a great fly for peacock bass. I just tie them on a bigger hook because they could, you know, your uh, your typical trout fly. It, the hook probably isn't stout enough to land a good good sized peacock bass, so I'll just straighten it. Another excellent fly for top water I forgot to mention is a guardside gurgler. The thing I like about the gurglers is they're just they're so light because it's mostly foam. Um, they're super easy to cast. They pop, they slide, they'll, they'll do whatever you want. I mean, for a top water fly, it's really tough to beat a gurgler. For peacocks, well, for snook and tarpon, I tie them in white, but for peacock bass, usually yellow or the same same color pattern, like the color of a peacock bass, orange, yellow green black um and just and work it really aggressively you know if they're up on a certain bust and bait i'll just put on a gurgler and, and have at it because they're going to come up and crush that thing so yeah a lot of fun anytime they're fishing well any fish that's taking bait on the surface is a, is the best time that's what you want i mean it's all visual you can see the fish come up from the bottom or just come out of cover out of nowhere and crush the fly there's nothing better than that Okay, touched on presentation a little bit, but um, just like I was saying earlier, the my favorite retrieve is just uh, a fast um, strip, just as fast as you can strip it. Basically, keep the rod tip low, keep it you know close to the water. That way, when the fish eats it, you don't have a lot of slack line hanging on the surface of the water. So you'll hook them right away, or they'll hook themselves. So fast retrieve. Um, the exception to that is if I'm seeing fish and they're just they're not onto that fast retrieve then i'll do a stop and go so i'll i'll speed it up really fast let it sink to the bottom or close to the bottom speed it up real fast again just stop and go all the way back and a lot of times it'll trigger them to strike um the the uh, the exception to that is fishing to bedded fish which is kind of um with all species you know fishing to spawning fish um is controversial i i, I will do it for peacock bass especially with a client but even for myself, the only thing I won't do is, and I would encourage you to do this as well, is, is if you catch one peacock, you know, get a picture, or whatever, release it, but don't catch both because you don't want to catch both off of the bed because then they're, they're disoriented. They're not going to go straight back to the bed. They're going to go in deep water, kind of recover. Um, and then in the meantime, the bait, not bait fish, but like cichlids, Mayan cichlids, um, tilapia, other invasive fish will come in and eat, probably even bluegills, I imagine, will come in and eat all the eggs in the nest, and then you're, there goes a thousand fry right there, so future peacock bass, so you never want to catch both. You can, I mean, there's no question, you can catch one, and they're so protective of the nest that you could 
go ahead and catch the second. I just don't think it's the right thing to do because you're basically killing that whole that whole group of fry or, or eggs that are going to be fry and then going to be baby peacock bass shortly. So, yeah, I'd, I'd encourage you to just catch one or even not even fish to them. But that's, that's hard to do. I mean, you see a big fish on a bed it's, or two, it's going to be hard not to fish realistically. But, you know, I'll squeeze a barb down on my hook, which I do almost all the time anyway for my flies. But, you know, not, not to hurt them. You know, get them back in the water. You know, get a quick picture, release them, let them continue to, to guard that nest. Um, you can really tell the difference between the peacocks, uh, the male and the female. The, the male, especially during spawning season, will have a lump on the back of their, kind of where their, their he head meets their body. And it's, it's um, sort of like, the, uh, it's full of fluid. They can live on that during the spawn, so they don't have to eat. Sort of like a camel will have, you know, the sack on their back full of fluid, so they can be in the desert and not have to drink water. They can still survive. It's the same principle. The females will not have that that hump on their back. And also, which another interesting thing about peacock bass is the males are actually bigger than the females. Most fish species, at least game fish, um, the female will be the bigger fish. Bigger. Than, just tell a quick fishing story here. I used to live on a pond in Doral, Florida, and it was one of those ponds that was never stocked with fish. Well, it hadn't been <laughs> until I moved there. But I would go and fish in the canals nearby, bring a bucket, of course, fill it up with water from the canal. Anytime I catch a peacock or a big um, mine cichlid, put them in the bucket and take them, or catch a few of them, really, and dump them in the pond. Well, over the course of a year, there were just some, there probably still are some giant peacock bass in that pond. Um, the pond wasn't much to look at. There's no structure. It's just, um, they, you know, they, it's basically a borrow pond. They, they use the fill from the pond to um, raise the, the level of the ground to, you know, for, for the uh, foundations of these, these townhomes they built, these homes. And so it was just like a box, basically a long rectangular box with a drop off. There was a shelf about a foot, foot and a half deep, and it would just drop off in the 10, 12 foot of water. It was just ideal for peacock bass habitat. And unfortunately they'd come around uh, maybe once a month, month and they would spray for weeds, which, you know, why I don't know, but you know, take away the the places the little fish and the fry, the, the bait fish to to hide. So and wouldn't even have to fish for, to spawning fish, just fishing for cruising fish looking that were feeding. And what I did would I bend the hook into the circle, you know, top water fly, of course. I wish I had videoed this. It was before I started filming my my fishing outings, but I had one time I hooked a fish. Well, not hooked. He ate the fly, jumped through the fly. Another fish ate the fly. He jumped through the fly. <laughs> I just, on the same retrieve, I hooked three fish. Well, hooked. They ate the fly. Didn't actually hook them. And, and they got off. So just, oh my gosh, I wish I could have gotten that on video. That was just so amazing. So on my YouTube channel, Mangroves to Mountains channel, there's some peacock bass. There's a, one of the, I um, can't think of the word, uh, playlists. One of the pay playlists is peacock bass fishing. So if you want to check out some some of my my trips you could do that there um i think it's all m mostly fly fishing but uh for peacocks but i'm, I'm gonna i'm anxious to film some more i haven't fil filmed a a peacock bass trip in a while and i need to get after it. it's I, just, I have no excuse there's there's literally within five minutes of where i live there's there's canals every one of them has peacock bass in it so i just kind of <laughs> quit being lazy and just and just go for it and get out there and film another uh, episode. So check that out. It's the Mangroves to Mountains channel. You can also check out my Patreon page. It's Jim Desias, J-I-M, of course, Desias, D-U-S-S-I-A-S. -S -S -S. It's on Patreon. I'm an artist, um, filmmaker, um, as you know, fishing guide. Uh, so I film most of my outings, but I also talk about my artwork on there. I show some of my process for paintings. I, I'm an oil painter primarily, also an art teacher. So there's some cool stuff on there you can check out on the Patreon page, if you would, please, and consider becoming a patron. That'd be great. Really appreciate the support. Okay, guys, have a great evening. Take care.